Let's work a couple of examples where we design multipole Butterworth filters. Let's first design a fourth order low pass filter. The first thing I'm going to do is draw my source and load. The filter is then going to sit between the two dotted lines. The problem says that the source and load are matched at 50 ohms. Let's go ahead and draw that in. We know that it needs to be a four pole filter, so it's going to have four reactive elements. Since it's a series fed filter, I know that the first element needs to be horizontal rather than vertical. Since it's a low pass filter, I also know that that first element in series needs to be an inductor. The second element's going to be a capacitor, and then we alternate inductor and capacitor to finish the layout. I'm going to label them from left to right. So let's call this inductor L1, and then we'll call the capacitor C2, since it's in position two. Then we have L3 and C4. We're going to look at the design table, which will give me the prototype values, and we need to refer to row four, since this is a fourth order low pass filter. Since it's series fed, we need to refer to the labels down here at the bottom. We now have the prototype value for inductor L1. I'll use a little parentheses down in the subscript to indicate that that's the prototype value and not the final value. Since it's an inductor, the label should be Henry's. Now we look down here and find the value for C2 in farads. Likewise for L3 and C4. These are just the prototype values, so these aren't corrected for the operating frequency or the load. To convert the prototype values into the actual final design values, we need to scale them. Here are the two scaling formula. Let's first scale inductor L1. We know all of these numbers. We know L1P, we know the load resistance, and we know the operating frequency. L1 works out to be 6.09 microhenries. For capacitor C2, we need to use the capacitor scaling equation. We again know everything we need to know in order to find the final value for C2. It works out to be 5.88 nanofarads. Let's finish it up and find L3 and C4 using similar process. So we've now finished the design. We created a fourth order low pass filter. In the next example, I'd like to design a bandpass filter. We'll be designing a third order bandpass series fed Butterworth filter at one megahertz. And again, we're gonna match the source and load impedances at 50 ohms. In order to design a bandpass filter, you might recall that we need to start with a low pass filter and then convert it to a bandpass filter. So let's look at the design table for a low pass Butterworth filter. It's a third order filter, so we need to look here at the row for order three. It's going to be a series fed filter, so we know that the first element needs to be an inductor if it's going to be a low pass filter. For the low pass prototype, I can then see from the chart that inductor L1 is going to have a value of one Henry, capacitor C2 is going to have a value of two farads, and inductor L3 is going to have a value of one Henry. When working this example, I'm just going to show the filter elements. I'm not going to draw the source and load resistors. The design chart for the low pass prototype just told us that the three elements are going to have values of one, two, and one. We now need to convert this low pass prototype circuit into a band pass prototype circuit. Every inductor is going to get a capacitor friend and every capacitor is going to get an inductor friend. For example, this one Henry inductor is going to get a one farad capacitor in series with it. Likewise for this one Henry inductor. For this two farad capacitor in the shunt configuration, we'll be adding a two Henry inductor also in the shunt configuration. We now have a bandpass prototype. We need to convert these prototype values into the actual final design values by scaling them to the source and load impedance and the operating frequency. We have four different scaling equations depending on where the inductors and capacitors sit in the circuit. Let's start with our capacitor. The prototype value was two farads. The bandwidth, according to the problem, is 10 kilohertz, and the source and load impedances are both 50 ohms. Let's now work on our inductor in the shunt configuration. We again have all the information that we need in order to calculate the final design inductance. Let's now turn our attention to the series branch and I'll be calculating the final value of the capacitors first. Let's start with this one farad capacitor over here. We can plug in all of the values that we already know. Here, 
the prototype value is 1 farad. I've determined that the value of this capacitor in the final design is going to be 31.8 picofarads. But if I look over here to this other branch, I can see that we have a second 1 farad capacitor. That's going to have the same value as well. The only thing that's left to calculate is the final value of the inductors. They're both 1 Henry, so I won't need to repeat this calculation. Plugging in all the values that we know, we find that both of these two inductors have values of 796 microhenries. We now have a complete and final design for our third order bandpass filter. How many poles does it have and how many zeros does it have? Well, because it has six reactive elements, we can conclude that it has six poles. For a bandpass filter, we also know that the number of zeros is going to be half the number of poles. Therefore, this six pole bandpass filter is going to have three zeros.